Hey everybody, welcome back. Things are going to get a little bit more complicated from here, but not terribly. So this is Array Methods 3 of Part 2 of Module 1. We're going to write a function called join arrays, which should probably be called concat arrays, because join is a thing, but it's not what we're about to do. Uh, given two arrays, join arrays returns an array with the elements of Array 1 in order, followed by the array elements in Array 2, theoretically also in order. Uh, you should be familiar with the concat method for this problem. Okay, this is where the problems start to become a little bit, there are several ways to go. So first thing, concat, it mentioned concat. So let's go to the Mozilla Developer Network website and we'll search for concat. String prototype concat, array prototype concat. Now this is, uh, the concat method is used to merge two or more arrays. That sounds promising. So the concat method is, the method does not change the existing arrays but instead returns a new array. So that's important. Um, Array 1, Array 2, Array 1, concat Array 2. Let's make this a little bigger. Array 1 dot concat Array 2, and that's going to output this, which is essentially what we want. So I'm actually going to grab this and paste it in here as a comment. So this was the example that allowed us to concatenate two arrays. So we're going to say variable concatted is equal to Array 1 dot concat and we're going to pass array2 in there. Then we'll return uh, concatted. So that works. So that's nice. The other thing uh, that you would notice with this problem is that we haven't gone over this in module 1 yet. But one thing that you could do would be create a new array, iterate over the first array, adding all of the elements in order, and then iterate over the second array, adding all of the elements in order. Which is essentially what concat is going to do but you want to keep in mind that here is where we start introducing methods that you can probably build yourself. So we're going to get into this more later as we kind of move on. However, keep in mind that if you are unable to remember the method, it is possible that you know a way to recreate the method. So get elements after. Write a function called get elements after, given an array and an index. Get elements after returns a new array with all of the elements after, but not including the given index. So variable output is equal to get elements after for A, B, C, D, E. They want us to get the elements after index 2, but not including index 2, which of course is just these two elements, and you can see them logged to the console here. So this should say that you should be familiar with the slice method, but to be sure, we actually don't need the slice method, and I'm going to show you what I mean. So first we're going to well, we haven't really gone over for loops yet in this section, but we did do for loops in the previous section, so hopefully you're familiar with them. Uh, so we're going to create a result. We'll set it equal to an empty array. We're going to create a for loop, and instead of iterating over the entire array, we're going to iterate from i equal to n plus 1. Then we'll say i is less than the array dot length because we want it to go the whole way, and then we'll increment i by 1 each time. And we're just going to result.push whatever the current element in the array is. And then we're going to return the result. So this is going to work, but this is not exactly what they meant for us to do. I think they wanted us to use slice. So let's go ahead and look up slice. Blob slice, not really sure what that is, but that's okay. Array prototype.slice. Slice method returns a shallow copy of a portion of an array into a new array object selected from beginning to end and not included. The original array will not be modified. So we got some animals. We could do slice from 2 to 4, which looks like it's going from here to just before the fourth element. So it includes the start index, but it does not include the end index. So if we think about what that would mean for slice, when it comes to our array methods over here, it's probably going to be something like, we'll just comment this out, return array dot slice from n plus 1 to the length of the array. Now if we check back here, it looks like if we just provide the first one, like one element, excuse me, if we just supply one argument to the slice call, it's going to start there and cut to the end of the array basically, because that's what it's done here. So if we have that in mind, we only really need to provide the initial uh, position for the slice, which is supposed to be one after the nth element. So if we run this, we're also correct. 
Cool, so get elements up to. So in order to do this, you should be familiar with the slice method. I feel like that other one should have said that, um, but as we showed, we can do it without the slice method using just an array, push, and a for loop that's selectively iterating over a portion of the array. So write a function called get elements up to. Get elements up to returns an array with all the elements up until, but not including the element at the given index. So if we think about that, slice lets us cut from some beginning portion. So we'll say return array dot slice. We want it to start at the beginning of the array and we want it to cut up to n but not include n. And as we saw, it actually doesn't. If we just put n as the end, the end is not included. So if we come back here and we just put n here, it's going to cut up to index n but it won't include it. So excellent work everyone. We, it was the first time that we saw where we can use a method or we can use things that will do basically what the method does. There will be more of that, but thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.